सो सरलेट कंटेनर रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज आर वॉट हियर फ्रॉम फर्स्ट ऑनवर्ड्स इट नीड टू रीड एच डी पी डेटा इट नीड टू कन्वर्ट इन टू एच डी सरलेट रिक्वेस्ट लेटर बेस्ड ऑन अड्रस इट नीड टू क्रिएट सरलेट ऑब्जेक्ट वन आफ्टर क्रिएशन ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट सेंड डेटा इट नीड टू सेंड द डेटा टू यूर सरलेट सो देन फाइनल अगेन वॉट इट नीड टू डू वन आफ्टर कंप्लीशन ऑफ प्रोसेस इट विल गिव द रेस्पॉन्स डेटा सो अगेन दट रेस्पॉन्स डेटा the response it will convert into again http protocol finally the same protocol data it will send to your browser so who will do this job your sarlet container we have one open source sarlet container given by apache apache given one container sarlet container apache given one tomcat it's a open source sarlet container open source means here freeware you can download and you can use it you no need to pay okay so this open source sarlet container you can use to run your sarlet classes but how to run we know exactly what we have to do every sarlet need to have a address and we need to design some html pages here we need to have some html pages we need to have some sarlets that sarlets they need to have some addresses and you need to have an application name here but which format i need to follow here to prepare as application sarlet application you need to follow some kind of directory structure here simply you should not create application there you should not put your sarlets you need to follow some folder structure here you must need to follow that folder structure without following that structure if you keep it can't able to find out your sarlet classes so which directory structure you need to follow here before putting application into your container you need to use one directory structure here so which directory structure we need to use <coughs> sarlet container will accept sarlet container will accept well directory structured application your application directory structure need to be applicable to your sarlet container so how that directory structure you need to prepare directory structure directories means folders only okay directory structure for sarlet directory structure for sarlets first you need to create a application folder first your application folder application folder so here in this application folder which name i should use for that folder your application name you have to use if your application is like icici bank application then you need to keep here icici if your application is my bank you need to keep my bank if your application is durga soft you need to keep durga soft so here application name is it's your choice you can keep any application name here okay inside that folder inside that folder again you need to have one more folder here again you need to have one more folder web info web inf you need to have one more folder web inf you need to have one more folder web inf inside that web inf again you need to have two more folders again you need to have two more folders here classes and one more folder is lib <coughs> okay this folder structure you need to follow <coughs> so inside that folders what i should put inside application folder inside application folder directly you can put here your view resources you can put view resources here view resources view resources means your html pages your jsp pages images audio files video files css files javascript files whatever the things you are using for your ui designing for that ui designing whatever the things you are using you can put all the designing pages inside your 
application folder directly okay so you can put all your view resources inside application folder view resources are what view resources are simple html pages your css files javascript files jsp pages and images audio videos anything any graphics files you can keep anything here which is useful for your ui for user interface what are the html css javascript images audio files video files you are using you can keep all these files under view resources this view resources is not a folder okay directly you can keep them under application folder inside your application folder you can store all these okay then here i have one more folder webinf inside that folder i have a classes folder and i have a libraries folder inside this classes folder what we should put inside classes your servlet classes servlet dot class files you need to put here you can have number of servlets right you can have number of servlet that all servlets you need to keep inside classes folder not only servlets along with your servlets you can keep any other extra java classes also okay if your application means application can have complete mvc classes right so you can have controller classes servlets are what simple controller classes so if that controller class if it requires any model where that model classes need to put you can put that models also here okay you can keep your servlet classes and you can keep your model classes also here you can keep your servlet classes and model related classes also you can write here okay but exactly this class is given for servlet classes but along with servlets you may require model support also here okay sometimes your application it may made by spring so if you do by using spring your model classes also you need to put here or else if you are using simple jdbc your model classes you need to put here but if it is ejb ejb model classes you should not put here in case of ejb we require again ejb container so that ejbs we need to remove from here and we need to keep them under ejb container okay if your model class if it is designed by using simple jdbc or else by using spring you can keep them here okay so along with your servlets you can keep your model classes also here and inside libraries what are the additional apis you required extra apis if you are using any file upload api then commons file upload commons file upload dot jar file if you are using any other extra jar files like while using servlets you need to keep a servlet api jar and if you are going through any other jar files that all jar files we need to keep here if you are using spring then spring related jar files for runtime what are the jar files we required whenever we required a class file from a particular jar file what we will do we used to keep that jar file into class path right but in case of servlet applications you don't need to put your jar files into class path instead of putting under class path you need to keep the jar files under library so then what your container will do your container at runtime it will keep all these jar files for class path you no need to worry about class path here just copy your jar files and keep them under libraries folder here and write your servlet classes under classes folder write your html pages under application folder okay so then finally the mapping between your the mapping between your browser and servlet here we have mapping url right so this mapping urls you need to put under one xml file that xml file name called web.xml inside this web.xml file you need to put mappings whenever i submit this form data the address is what something slash a where we need to put this address inside web.xml file so in this web.xml file you need to keep your mapping data whenever the request is for a i want to execute a servlet a servlet that mapping information you need to keep under web.xml file by reading that web.xml file your servlet container will understand for a which form which servlet need to execute so inside web.xml file what we should configure here the mapping between form and servlet the mapping between form and servlet we need to keep them under web.xml file so whenever i try to create my application by using this directory structure when i put this directory directly into servlet container servlet container will do what first if i use the directory structure and if i keep that application as it is in servlet container inside tomcat container okay under tomcat container if i put it if i keep this under tomcat servlet container 
if you put this application into tomcat container inside tomcat container actually there is one folder web root folder inside that web root folder if you keep it inside web root folder if you put your application so then what your container will do when you start your container when you call start when you call start when you call start on your container container will do what container will try to read all the applications web.xml files first your servlet container servlet container tomcat servlet container if it is a tomcat what it will do first it will read your web.xml file from your from your application folder it will read web.xml file in that web.xml file it will read all these mappings it will read all these mappings in these mappings what we are configuring something some form url and servlet class it will it will read all this data in this data if it find any invalid servlet here it will shows class not form while reading itself it will try to search for this paths whether this a class is there or b class is there in this classes folder or not it will search okay first it will read your web.xml file inside web.xml file we are trying to mapping what form and servlets so for that servlet it will try to search under classes folder okay here if it find a a servlet it will try to find out for the a servlet class inside your classes if it find that class okay it is fine if it not find then it will shows class not found exceptions okay see a simple example while writing a letter you need to keep two address but your home also need to have same address right postal office also need to have same address when you try to post a letter here i need to keep some two address okay here you need to enter your two address and you need to post it so who will receive first directly it will go to your home it need to go to near postal office right it need to go to first your postal office then postal office people what they will do is this two address is fine or not they will check if it is fine then it will send to your home or else okay so here what we are trying to doing just we are trying to mapping when i submit a form for that form it requires address without having address how it can map to a servlet getting inside form you have inside form you have address but i have a form address here and i have many servlets here which servlet need to execute for that form so when my form address form address compulsory you need to keep two address here without having two address how we can submit inside form you need to have two address again the two address related to which servlet that need to configure under web.xml file okay so by reading this web.xml file it will read your servlet class so is this servlet class is there in this classes folder or not it will search if it find that class okay it is fine it will not do anything it will try to read these files if it find any file here this class file here it will leave it if it not find then while starting itself it will shows class not found exceptions your servlet container will says inside web.xml file you have configured some servlets i try to servlet i try to search for that servlets here i didn't find the servlet class so and so class name it will show to us okay so whatever the classes you are going to configuring here that all classes must need to be there under your classes folder why because at the time of starting time your tomcat container by reading web.xml file it will try to read your servlet classes here and what it will do it will not do anything sometimes it will create your objects at the time of starting time itself okay inside web.xml file there are many configurations you can configure actually for this servlet if you say your ai servlet is important one we can keep some load on startup for this servlet let's say if you configure some load on startup 0 or 1 important that means important without configuring load on startup if you configure a, your servlet then that servlet is not important if you if you configure load on startup here then you are saying to your servlet container my servlet is important one so then what your tomcat container will do when you start if it find any load on startup here okay it will decide to create this object at the time of starting time itself if it not find any load on startup then it will not create your servlet object when it will create servlet object actually whenever you submit data first time whenever you submit this address first time then it will create your servlet object but if it find any load on startup at the time of starting time itself it will create your servlet object 
okay so anyways so it will try to read your a surlet and if it find load and startup here that surlet object it will create if it not fine just it will find out whether that class is there or not okay anyways finally what you should do once after starting your container you need to invoke your view pages you need to open one browser you need to open one browser in that browser you need to enter url you need to enter your url here so if you have any page here if you have any page here that page url if you pass here that page url if you pass here that page content it will load that page content it will load means from here to here it will load one HTTP content. So once after loading your HTTP content, if you submit your data, if you submit your data for every form, it need to have a, some address, right? Form action. So if you have one form action here, slash a, if your form action slash a, when I submit it along with your URL, it will append slash a. Then this data again, it will submit to your server in the form of HTTP protocol. It will send your data. <laughs> Then for this A address, it will try to find out a surlet here. It have one surlet, right? A surlet. So then directly it will invoke your A surlet. And it will submit data to A surlet class. Finally, A surlet need to give response. That same response it will send to your browser. Okay? Got it? So you must need to follow this directory structure. And here web.xml file is not mandatory. From surlet 3 API onwards, they give an annotation support. Annotation means annotations we need to keep on top of your surlet itself. They given some web surlet annotations. On this surlet annotation itself, you can keep your URL patterns. You can keep it on top of your class itself. You don't need to use any web.xml files. Okay. But before surlet 3, we must need to configure web.xml file here. So you can call this web.xml file as a deployment descriptor file. Okay, you can call it as deployment descriptor file. So in this web.xml file, what we need to configure for the deployment, whatever the things you required, not only these mappings, any startup things if you required, any inputs if you want to pass to your servlet, so that inputs also you can pass from here. Okay, all the required startup things you can configure under web.xml file. Okay, there are many tags in web.xml file. Okay, yeah, later we'll discuss all those tags. This is the directory structure we need to follow. And here, which classes we need to put only? Servlet classes only we have to put. Servlet classes means? Is it a simple Java class? It's a plain Java class or else we need to extend it from any other API. You, are, you need to extend your servlet classes from servlet API. Okay.